For this episode of Dragon Ball Super, we see the return of not only probably one of the best villains in Dragon Ball, but probably the fan favorite. And of course, I'm talking about Frieza. Frieza makes a return in this episode. And this episode, episode 19 of Dragon Ball Super, we actually see the official start of the resurrection of F Arc, all the way from the movies, finally being inputted into Dragon Ball Super. And I'm just really excited because for me, Frieza is probably one of my all time favorite villains and probably the most iconic villain in all of Dragon Ball. And just to see this character come back into the fold and just to see where this arc is gonna be taken within Dragon Ball Super is gonna be very exciting to see. And just watching this episode, I even got that like presence that Frieza has, very ominous. You know that Frieza is just a powerhouse and especially at the very end of this episode, when you see him fully regenerated and, you know, looking at all of his men as they revived him, I was like, this is actually pretty good right now. And you get that feeling, that dread of what Frieza brings to the table. And it was just so enjoyable to watch. So just to start off with this episode, we actually start off in hell and it goes through different sections of hell and what i really like about this is like frieza's own interpretation of hell is everything that is good in the world you see like these fairies flying around you see like stuffed animals just playing with toy instruments and i find that very funny that the most evil character in all of the universe his version of hell is basically all of this goody two-shoes nonsense where he would just find this all disgusting and revolting people singing songs and just actually being happy so i find that very funny that frieza is in this type of hell to where there's no nothing for him there it's just all happiness and cheerful and everyone singing songs very funny to watch but moving away from that we actually see all of the frieza force coming up with a plan in this episode on to retrieve the Dragon Balls first from the Namekians. They're trying to find new Namek, but they actually can't find it. So they end up resorting to, you know, sneaking onto Earth and trying to get the Dragon Balls there. But as their reconnaissance shows, Pilaf and the gang are already gathering all of the Dragon Balls. And, you know, with Goku and Vegeta already off training with Whis, all of our Z fighters aren't really paying attention to, you know, who's gathering the Dragon Balls. And I was watching this episode and looking at Piccolo and Gohan, even even when they notice the sky going dark, they don't do anything. It's like, if you saw that and you know the inclinations of Shenron being summoned, do you think you would go and find out who's just summoned Shenron? But that tends to not be the case within this episode. So we see Sorbet and Togoma go down to Earth and basically, you know, find out where Pilaf and the gang have all the Dragon Balls. They basically corner them and basically tell them, it's like, hey, give us your Dragon Balls or we'll just obliterate you into nothing. So they basically, you know, just threaten them until Pilaf has no other choice choice but to give them the Dragon Balls. There's a great scene, you know, where they summon Shinron and I was actually very curious with the scene as well because from my knowledge, and I could be very, very wrong, but I remember Shinron after Dende became the guardian of Earth, you know, giving the power of two wishes, but it seemed like within this episode they stated that now Shinron is able to give three wishes, so I could be wrong about that, but I think I remember it actually being two wishes, so correct me if I'm wrong on that, but they end up, you know, wish wishing Frieza back to life, even though they had this really cool flashback sequence of showing Frieza being killed by Trunks back in the Dragon Ball Z days, and Shenron basically telling them that if you do revive him, I'm only going to be able to revive him in those pieces. His body is not going to be able to come back fully, so you're just going to have all these bits and remains of Frieza. So they end up agreeing to that, saying that we can just use our regenerative pod and just put all those pieces in there and then just basically have Frieza to come back to life that way and so that was their first wish and then you know Pilaf and the gang end up swooping in and using the last two wishes on a million zenny and the world's most tastiest ice cream which I find very funny and it's just typical Toriyama type humor kind of going all the way back to OG Dragon Ball days when the first wish ever in Dragon Ball for the most comfiest pair of panties so that's just the type of humor you get with Toriyama and Dragon Ball and you know Sorbet and Togoma, you know, they yell at them and all that stuff with the Pilaf gang, but they end up taking all the pieces of Frieza and going back to their ship, reviving Frieza, and then we're just left with the cliffhanger of, you know, Frieza looking at all of his men, just having that presence back in the series and just waiting to see. I really can't wait to see this arc with Frieza because we do have the uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai voice actor. I do miss the old 
Funimation Dragon Ball Z voice actress for Frieza. It's just very nostalgic for me, but I do really like the voice actor that does the voice for Frieza right now. And I just really, really can't wait to see what Frieza brings to the table for this arc. But besides Frieza, we also did get a little bit of Goku and Vegeta continuing their training with Whis. I really did like that sequence and actually the animation and fighting and the choreography used in that scene. I really, really enjoyed that and actually flowed a lot better than previous episodes. But I also like too that Whis is just so fast and skilled at fighting that even while he's blocking all of Goku and Vegeta's punches, he's even able to sign both of their uniforms with his symbol and even blocks with one hand just using his thumb and pinky to block Vegeta and Goku's punches. Whis is just a badass. I love his character and his introduction into Dragon Ball Super in general. I just love this character a lot. And another thing just to mention too is just seeing Uncle Piccolo at his finest taking care of Pan. I love how when Gohan and Videl go out to, you know, either go shopping or get groceries, they call call in Piccolo to babysit for their child. And I know like the whole running joke is with Piccolo is actually like the real father of Gohan. I think that comes full force here because right now they're even referring to him as Uncle Piccolo as he's babysitting for Pan. And it's just so adorable just to watch him actually, you know, the Demon King Piccolo, who used to be this insane bad guy back during the end of Dragon Ball, is now watching over Gohan's child playing peekaboo. Like, oh my god, Piccolo, what has happened to you? But overall, this episode with Frieza's introduction and getting just getting to see Goku and Vegeta further in their training with Whis, I'm really looking forward to see what happens in this Resurrection of F adaptation in Super. And also we did get a little, you know, Easter egg with uh, Ginyu the frog back from Namek Saga of Dragon Ball Z popping up in this episode. And I already do know what's gonna be happening with this arc. So I'm really looking forward to see what's gonna be happening with that Ginyu frog in later episodes. So Frieza's back. Better, better and badder than ever, and I'm just really looking forward to see Frieza, you know, the power-ups that Frieza's gonna have, and also they did tease the Super Saiyan Blue transformation in the opening for this episode. So, overall, great episode, guys. Uh, I wanna hear your thoughts on this episode as well. Let me know what you guys thought about Frieza returning to the world of Dragon Ball within this episode of Dragon Ball Super, and did you guys get the same feeling that I did? Just the presence and just the overall dread that Frieza brings. Did you get that same feeling just watching and being like, oh man, I'm actually getting excited for Frieza coming back. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you guys are fans of Dragon Ball Super and are watching the dub on Toonami as it airs week to week and would love to talk about it, feel free to subscribe. I would love to talk with you guys. And I'm just really looking forward to see this resurrection of F arc just officially starting in Dragon Ball Super. That's it for this review, guys. Until next week, when we get into episode 20 of Dragon Ball Super, I'll talk with you guys then. All right, guys. See you later.